Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Project Soar Fit. Ooh, it sounds like I'm getting a little feedback, so I'm going to adjust this volume. Here we go. That's a little better. All right. Well, once again, welcome. Um, Project Soar is a program. Um, for veterans with disabilities through Access of Wilmington. So we provide adapted sports and recreation for veterans with disabilities through a VA grant. I'm the program coordinator if you haven't had a chance to meet me. And again, my name's Erin. Um, we do lots of really cool, fun recreation. We go surfing and scuba diving and we do archery and air rifle. We go kayaking and climbing. There's just a whole host of really fun, amazing things that we do. And we also want to make sure that we are all as fit as we possibly can be so that we can enjoy all these really fun things that's out there that we want to enjoy. So we have a fitness class that we do um, right now, we've been doing them um, virtually. Um, we may go back to face-to-face -face again soon. Um, we just kind of go back and forth and see what works best for people. But um, in addition to doing this class live um, via Zoom, I am also recording this. So since I didn't see anyone log on with me today, that means you're probably doing this workout with me on YouTube. So you are in control with that remote. Feel free to use it whenever you need to. Um, if you haven't worked out with um, me through Project Soar before, these um, are functional fitness classes, meaning that they hit some really important parts of keeping us functional in our lives. Things like cardiovascular endurance, um, muscular strength, flexibility, and balance. So as we move through the exercises, we're gonna kind of hit all those points, sometimes one at a time and sometimes doing exercises that are kind of full body and hit multiple of those. Um, and they're also adapted. So that means even if you have a injury that is something that you're working on improving or some, uh, an injury that you're going to be with, uh, be with you the rest of your life, we want you to be able to still be as fit and functional as you can possibly be, whatever that means for you. So I'm going to give some different variations of different options you can try. Some things just to change the angle or to maybe do an exercise seated instead of standing or laying down. Um, and sometimes it may be adding intensity or taking the intensity down. Since I don't have anyone live with me, I sort of just have to riff about things that I know people are working with and try to give options I think will work for the vast majority of people. But as you're moving through this, if you realize, hey, there's just none of, none of these options really work for me and I'm not really sure what to do, please don't get dis, um, disgruntled or feel like that you can't do this. Reach out to me. My phone number and email are in the description on the video on YouTube. Give me a call, give me a text or an email, and we'll try to make sure that I'm giving options that work for you. Um, that being said, if you worked out with me on Monday, we are doing the exact same set of exercises, but instead of doing a hit style workout where we're doing 50 seconds of work and 10 seconds to transition and then just repeating that, um, we are actually going to do a little faster of the transition. So we're going to, or not transition, we're going to be doing 20 seconds of work and 10 seconds to transition. So a little bit less time spent on each exercise, a little more time resting in comparison to um, on Monday. And, but instead of doing two rounds at that longer interval, we're going to do three rounds. Um, so we'll do this three times, but you're not doing each exercise for as long as you would if you did the Monday workout. Um, and you can try both since they're both on YouTube, give them both a try, see how they feel. Even though you're doing the same exercise in about the same amount of time, it may feel really different to change that interval. Um, that being said, because we're changing intervals so quickly, I'm not really able to show all the different options each time we move through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a real quick once over of what we're gonna do together today and then, and show you some different options. And then when we move through, I will just demonstrate whatever I'm demonstrating at the time. If it's different than the one that you need, go ahead and do the one you need, even if I'm demonstrating something different that round, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and just 
see what today's workout is going to look like. I have put into the 13 exercises that we're doing four times that we're going to do cardio and cardio can be whatever you want it to be as long as it gets your heart rate up and we'll do a little warm up after I do this demonstration um, and I'll give you some different cardio options but I'm leaving that for you cardio is a wild card you can do what works best for you and I like I said I'll give you some different options um, so the very first exercise that we are going to do is a cardio one. So again, that's going to be your wild card. We'll do it for 20 seconds and then 10 seconds to transition to exercise number two, which is going to be a squat with an alternating leg lift. So that is going to look a little bit like this. We're going to do a squat and keep our shoulders over our hips. And then as we come up, we'll lift one leg, squeezing right there in that glute, put that bit back down again, squat again and then lift the other leg. If you need to take this out a little wider so this works for your joints, feel free to make that change. And if you are someone who's working out from a seated position today, instead of a squat, another way that you can sort of move some of these joints and get that movement is you can do a heel lift and then either still do a lift or you can do a slide if you wanna keep your foot on the floor. I keep hitting my mat when I do that. So I'll probably lift my foot up a little bit when I demonstrate that for you. Exercise number three is going to be alternating lunges. I'm going to turn here so that you can see these. So you have two different ways that you can do this. You can either step back into a lunge, step forward and then switch sides and go back and forth like this. Or if it feels better for your joints, you could do a step forward to a lunge, step back. And feel free to try those both out. You don't have to do the same thing every round. You can try a different one each round. If you're seated, we're gonna do these as knee lifts. So lifting one knee up and then the other. You can do that faster and march it out, or you can do it slow and really get into that joint, maybe even use your hands. So you get to make a little option, a little choice there about what you need more of today. Do you need more of that cardio or do you need more of that stretch? All right, where were we? That was alternating lunges, alternating side lunges. So looking a little different for this, feet come wide. You can take a little lunge to one side, press through that heel to come back up. That's gonna activate that glute and then you take it to the other side. Try to go wide enough with your legs that when you come down into your lunge, your knee can kind of stay more or less over your ankle. So what I want you to try to avoid is if your feet are really close and then you go really deep, that kind of makes it hard to balance. So, and also puts a lot of strain on the knee. So make sure you're far enough out that you're able to keep that knee in good alignment. And if you feel like you're a little unstable, maybe just don't go quite so deep. Go to where you can keep your shoulders over your hips and you feel stable. If you're doing this seated, Again, we can come back to that idea of a slide. So we can slide one leg out, come back, slide the other leg out. So really getting into some of those same parts of our joint that we are if we did the standing. So getting to use that hip joint. Then exercise number five is we're back to cardio. Again, that is gonna be your choice. Um, then we start moving on to some more upper body stuff. So we're going to do a combo for exercise number six. We're going to do a bicep curl and then a variation of a bicep curl called a hammer curl. And the only thing that really changes is the orientation of your hands. So for a bicep curl, palms are up. You can curl the fingers and really squeeze through that bicep to bring the hands up and then back down. And then we rotate. Now the palms are facing your thighs squeeze up, come down, and then we come back into that hammer curl. You can do exactly the same thing seated. So I'm not gonna demonstrate that because it looks exactly the same. You sit up as tall as you can and you do those same movements. I am totally, you can do this with no weight, just like I showed you. If you want more resistance, here's that chance to go up in intensity. You could use small hand weights and do the same thing. And you can also use these resistance bands, these stretchy bands. 
We actually have some of these at Access of Wilmington. So if you want to have some of those, let me know and I can get some to you. All right, after we do that bicep hammer curl combo, we're gonna do a shoulder press fly combo. So to do that, our hands start about shoulder, or our, sorry, our elbows are about shoulder height. Our hands are facing forward and we come up and then back down. And here's where that fly comes in. We squeeze the forearms towards each other, come back, press, down, fly, back out. So we repeat that. Again, these can be done seated, standing, with additional resistance or without, totally up to you. We're gonna go back to cardio after those two upper body moves. And then we're gonna do something that if you aren't in your chair, I'm gonna show you how to do it from the floor and then I'll show you the short chair version. So we're gonna do a right, we're gonna do a kneeling side bend so I'm gonna come down on my left knee and extend my right leg, put my left hand down. So this is all making a nice straight line. And then I'm going to do a side bend by coming up and towards that leg. So I'm really engaging the oblique muscles to come into this and I'm getting a nice stretch here. Come back down, kind of cartwheel the arms to come back into that side, plank, and then lift this leg and then repeat. So that's what it looks like on the ground. We'll do that on one side and then we'll do it on the other. But just to keep going, I'm gonna demonstrate on the other side what this would look like from a chair. So I kind of scooch over to the side of the chair so I can put my thigh and my seat there. You may have to play with this so that you can feel stable and balanced. My right hand goes on the edge of the chair. Again, you may have to play with this so that you can find where it makes sense for you so that you feel stable. My left leg is extended and I'm gonna come up and over and come back. And again, I have that option of adding that leg lift. If lifting is a little much, you could do a slide forward and back or you can just leave that out. And you have that option too on the floor. If that leg lift is just more than makes sense for you today, then leave that out and stick with that side bend. Then we get to do cardio again. That was exercise number 11. And then just two more, the last two are for our abdominal muscles. So on our back, hands behind the head, lift one knee, bring the elbow to knee. Everything comes back down and then switch sides. Just like that. If lifting the legs up is a little more than you need, simply go side to side. And you have that same option seated. So again, I'm kind of moving out a little bit to the edge of the chair as far as I'm able to go and stay stable. I'm gonna bring my hands behind my head. I can bring my elbow and knee towards each other and go side to side, or I can go elbow to knee and leave the knees where they are. Final exercise, I'll start in the chair and then move back down to the floor to show you. It's flutter kicks. So again, find where you can be stable and supported. You may have to lean back a little bit if you're seated and extend the legs, flutter kick. If your legs are straight, this is gonna be more challenging. If you bend your knees, this makes it a little more accessible. And if you leave one foot on the ground and then alternate that way, again, that takes down the intensity a little bit. You really wanna be able to feel the muscles in your abdominal region engage, and you wanna take that strain off your back. So if your back feels strained, see if you can come into one of those options. It's a little less intense so that you can concentrate on those abdominal muscles and not strain the back as you build strength you can start changing what you do. And on the floor, it looks like this. And again, you have some control here with intensity. The more your feet are up in the air, the easier it is. The more you come down here, the more challenging it is. The straighter your legs are, the more challenging it is. And the more your legs are bent, the less intense it's going to be. And here, you really wanna keep your low back stuck to the ground. So pulling the belly in. If you feel like you're arching your back, that's probably gonna start hurting. See if you can find a variation that lets you keep that connection. And then that's it. 
Like I said, we're gonna do those 13 exercises three times. We'll have a 30 second break. But since you are doing this on YouTube, you have control. Um, before we get into those, we are gonna do a little warm up and stretch. And then at the end, we'll do a cool down. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm gonna start, oops, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna start my smartwatch so I can track this and see what my numbers are. Um, and we'll just start with two minutes of a warm up. Hopefully you've had a chance to get out in that beautiful weather today and do something fun and get your heart pumping. But if you have it, don't worry about it. We'll move for about two minutes. I usually just break it up into four different exercises so I don't get bored. Um, you can do the same four as me or you can do whatever you like. So I'm gonna start with jogging for 30 seconds. If jogging and all this like bouncing around isn't great for your joints and stuff, you don't have to do this like kind of high intensity. You can do a marching, you can do a side by side. If you're not as clumsy as me and you want to jump rope, jump rope is a great way to get your heart rate up. I'm just afraid I'm going to catch my ceiling fan and get flying. So <laughs> I'm going to skip the jump rope. All right, that was 30 seconds. I don't want to get bored, so I'm going to move on and do jumping jacks. You can do sort of classic jack like I am. You could keep your arms a little lower and do a seal jack. You could also keep that intensity lower and do a low impact jack. And you can do jack seated with both arms and legs or arms only or legs only. All right, let's move on. Since I'm seated, I'm gonna stay seated and show that we can do some cardio seated. I'm gonna punch it out, just doing these front jabs. And you can see it's more than just my shoulders and arms moving, I'm actually rotating through my torso. So this is also a great core workout. You can do this standing or seated. I mentioned there's lots of little cardio things you could do. If you like burpees, you can do burpees. All right, final one. I'm going to do a seated twist. You can do this with me or again, whatever options work for you. We've got less than 30 seconds on this cardio clock and then we're gonna move on to doing some dynamic stretching to get ready for our workout proper. Ooh, almost done. And that's two minutes. So let's move on to that dynamic stretching. Um, I like to do a little check-in as part of this with squats, because we're gonna do a lot of movement in our lower body. And I just kind of want to see how all my joints are doing. So again, if you're working out seated, do the same thing I'm doing, but do it as heelless. We're gonna start with feet pretty narrow, may maybe touching or maybe about hips distance. And we're gonna, Either do that heel raise seated or kind of sink into a squat, press through the heels, come back up. Don't worry about getting your heart rate up here. Now that we have it up, it'll stay up as long as we keep moving. Right now we're just sort of checking in with how all these joints feel so we can make good decisions about which exercises to do. After you do about five, Take this out a little wider, maybe about as wide as your shoulders. Same thing, either heel lifts or squats. Trying to keep the body upright, noticing how your balance is today. Noticing how all your joints feel. How your energy level is. And then the final one, we're gonna go out pretty wide. You can even open the toes out so that your knees and hips and toes are all aligned as you move into a deep wide leg squat. Good job. All right. Let's do a little bit of work um, along our spine. So we're gonna do a cat cow. Now you can do a cat cow just like you do in a yoga class on your hands and knees. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate from the chair today. So my hands are on my thighs or just above my knees. And then as I inhale into that cow pose, arching the back, lifting up my chest, lifting up the tailbone a little, 
and then exhale, rounding the back, tucking the tailbone, looking down into my thighs or my belly, and just move through that a few times. Maybe one more. And then we're gonna be doing a lot of side bending today with some of these exercises. So let's kind of warm that up. Let's do a little side bend. And then in this side bend, let's do a little twist. So turning the chest down towards the earth, back to the front, and then just rotating a little more so chest is up towards the ceiling. And do a few of those. Again, your range of motion may be a little different from mine. You may have a bigger range of motion or smaller, that's fine. Just move through this in a way that you can still breathe. And let's come to the other side. You can still breathe and maybe it feels a little challenging, but it shouldn't be painful. And let's do those twists here. Inhale up, exhale, rotate down. Try to find where you're challenging yourself just enough to make improvements, but not so much that you're gonna cause an injury or aggravate an injury. Back to the front and let's come here. We're gonna do some opening in our hips. We are gonna do a lot of work with our hips today. Um, you can do these standing. Today I'm gonna to demonstrate seated. So, we're gonna make circles in our hip joint. I'm gonna scooch over to the left side of my chair. So, I'm sorry, the right side of my chair so that I can work on this right hip. And I'm going to lift the knee up and out and around. So again, you can do the same thing standing. I just wanna show that you can do this in a chair as well. And then after going about five times in this direction, we keep that circle, but we take it in the other direction. And then after about five times, let's kick that leg out in front and then kick it back. And I'm gonna to need to move my chair forward. So back and front, just a few times. And my foot's lifted again, because I don't wanna keep kicking my mat, but if you wanna slide your foot on the floor while you do this, that's a great option. And then we're gonna do the same thing but side to side. So just working that joint from a few different angles. Great job. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. So all three of those actions in that joint. First, making circles with that knee bent. Mine's extra clicky today. And then the other direction. And then let's do that forward and back kick. And then the side to side kick. Great job. Um, let's work a little bit on our shoulders and neck and then we'll get started. So I'm gonna stand up. We're gonna shrug the shoulders up, back and down, kind of making circles. You can keep your hands loose at your side or you can bring your hands to your shoulders and make circles with your elbows. Or you can extend your arms out and make big circles. I like to mix it up. And then we switch directions again. You can do any of those three or any combination that works for you. And then let's, uh, let's do a little stretch with our neck. So I'm gonna let my right ear just fall towards my right shoulder. I'm not trying to force it, I'm just allowing gravity to sort of pull it in that direction. And then noticing any stretching sensation, any opening that I'm getting along here. And then if you wanna explore that, you can tilt your chin down towards your shoulder or maybe up towards the ceiling. 
And then as you're exploring that, you can keep moving. Or if you get to a place where you feel like you're having a really nice stretch and maybe you need to spend some time there, just take a couple breaths and then start moving again whenever you're ready. And then after this next exhale, let's just go ahead and let the chin fall down towards the chest and then take the left ear to the left shoulder. We'll do the same thing on this side. Pausing for a moment just to notice what you're feeling. And then if you want, you can start to add that movement. You may find that if there's a place that needed a little more time, it's at a different angle than it was on the other side. And that's pretty typical. Even if you don't have a, a specific injury in your neck and shoulder area, most of us have a tendency to sleep on one side differently or to hold our neck a certain way when we drive or work. So that's really common. All right, after that next exhale, chin to chest, let's look up. I'm ready to get going. I don't know about you. Let's get this, let's get this party started. I don't play music on my side because it's hard to hear me if I do. But if you've got a great workout mix, I really encourage you to play it. I always find that super motivating. All right, we're going to start in about 10 seconds. I'm going to start my stop or my clock. And remember, we're going to start with cardio. We've got five seconds. Any cardio you'd like. I'm going to jog. Here we go. Remember, if you weren't ready yet, you've got that remote. Hit pause. Come back in when you're ready. That was 20 seconds. In 10 seconds, we're going to be doing that squat and alternating leg lift or that seated one, the heel lift. Let's go. Let's go. Squat, leg lift. Squat, leg lift. Try to keep your chest lifted and really drive through those heels when you're coming up from that squat. That's going to help strengthen our legs. Wow, these go fast. All right, next is those alternating lunges. I'm going to step back, but remember you have other options. Let's go. Let's go. That's halfway. All right, next is those alternating side lunges. So go ahead and get ready because we're gonna get there quick. Let's go. Let's go. Everything I demonstrated before was pretty much body weight. But remember, you can always up the intensity with weights if you wanted to hold on to hand weight or kettlebell or something like that during these lunges. That'd be a great way to increase the intensity. Rest, we're gonna do cardio again. So get ready for whatever cardio you wanna do this round. Let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna move off the squeaky part of my floor. So sorry if I'm not centered in the frame, but it's driving me nuts here in that squeak. All right, exercise number six is on to upper body. I'm actually gonna add some hand weights here. You're welcome to if you'd like, but you don't have to. Let's go. Bicep curl, transition hammer curl. Transition back to hammer curl, bicep curl. So just alternating. And if you mess it up, don't worry. You'll be just fine. All right, in 10 seconds, we're gonna move on to that shoulder press and fly. Again, you can add weight or an exercise band or not, totally up to you. Let's go. Let's go. Press, lower, fly, open. There you go. Just like that. Again, if you get out of the rhythm a little bit, don't worry about it. Just come back in. You don't have to follow my pace. 
The great thing about these HIIT workouts is since they're timed, you can go at your own pace. All right, we're back to cardio. In three, two, one, let's go. All right, that's already halfway. All right, if you're not working out in a chair, we're coming down to our mats for this next bit. Side kneeling. Let's go. Side bend. Cartwheel back, leg lift. Again, you do not have to go the same pace as me. Let's switch to the other side. Find a pace that works for you. It can be faster or slower than me. Let's go. Let's go. So we're on the other side doing the same thing we just did. All right, exercise number 11, back to cardio. Let's go. Let's go. There's that squeaky spot again. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear it. Two more exercises, both are cardio. I'm coming right down to the mat. First is that alternate knee to elbow crunch. Let's go. Let's go. Final exercise of this round is flutter kicks. Go ahead and get into position for your variation. And remember, this is an exercise for abdominals. So we're really wanting to feel that. And we also want to protect our back as our core gets stronger, our abdominal muscles get stronger. That's what helps protect our back. So those two things are happening at the same time. All right, 30 seconds of rest. Remember, you've got a remote, so if you need longer, take it. Good chance to either get a stretch or drink water or use the bathroom right now. Um, and when we come back, we're gonna start that again. I'm gonna demonstrate the exercises from the chair this round, but if you're practicing another variation, remember you can practice whichever exercise variation works for you. I just wanna be able to show this option we come right into cardio guys let's go i'm gonna punch it out and i'm sorry about all that exterior noise if you can hear that they're doing construction outside so some of that might be coming in all right exercise number two squat and alternate leg lift i'm going to do that as a heel lift and a kick out. Let's go. Let's go. Heel lift, kick out, heel lift, kick out. Remember, you can also do a slide if you don't want to do a kick. I just don't want to keep hitting my mat. So I'm going to do a little kick. Going at your pace. Woo, those go fast. Next is alternating lunges. Remember, if you're standing, you can do a front lunge or a back lunge. I'm going to do knee lifts here. And I'm actually going to do these knee lifts with a little assist from my hand, just to get a little deeper in that stretch. I already went for a run today, so I don't need a ton more cardio. So I'm not super worried about that. But if you want more cardio, you could do that more like a march out. All right, next is those side lunges. Let's go. 
and I'm gonna slide and slide. I don't kick my mat when I go out to the side. So I'm gonna try to keep it mostly on the floor here. To do that, I'm kind of scooched all the way out to the edge of my chair. If that's not stable for you, stay back a little farther and make, you might have to go at more of an angle. All right, back to cardio. In five seconds, I'm gonna punch it out. Here we go. Rest, we're moving to upper body next. We're gonna do that bicep curl, hammer curl. And I'm actually gonna use the band this time. So palms up, bicep curl, palms towards my thighs, hammer curl. Great job, everyone. Next is that shoulder press with a fly squeeze. Let me see if I can use the bands for this. Let's go. Up and, oh, up and down and then end. It's a little bit different feeling using the bands. So I just had to get my mind around that for a moment. And coming back to cardio, exercise number eight coming up. Let's go. Let's go. and rest until we move on to this side bend leg lifts. I'm gonna do this seated again. Let's go. Let's go. And then let's take it to the other side. Ten more seconds. And then we have three exercises left this round. Next will be cardio, and then we have two abdominal exercises, and then we get a rest, and then we do this all one more time. Let's go. Here we go with our cardio. 20 seconds. Really put some energy in it to get that heart rate up and staying up as we move through all these different exercises. Two more exercises. Next one's that alternating knee to elbow crunch. Let's go. Let's do this. 20 seconds on the clock. All right, last exercise coming up. We're gonna do those flutter kicks. And I'm gonna to try to do the seated version. I find these way more challenging. Last round. Last round. All right, 30 seconds to rest. And then we're gonna do our third and final round and then we get to cool down. Um, 
This next round, I'm going to mix it up. Some stuff I'll do out of the chair, some stuff in the chair. So you do whichever exercise option works for you. And it might be different this round. So you can change it up too. Oh, let's get ready. Let's go. Let's go back to cardio. I'm going to start out in my jog. All right, next exercise is that squat and alternating leg lift or that chair option, which is a heel lift. Oh my goodness, ready to go. And lift. And lift. All right, next is those alternating lunges. My knees are giving me a little bit of trouble today. So I'm gonna come out and not do the lunge this round. I'm gonna do this option instead. This feels a little bit better for me today. But you could do the alternating lunges either forward or back if that is appropriate for you today. All right, next is the alternating side lunges. I'm gonna come back up for these. These feel all right to me. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's move on to, ah, I almost forgot, cardio. I almost cheated myself out of a cardio round. You know what, and I'm gonna stay standing, but I'm gonna come back to the punches and I'm just gonna do them standing. So remember that's an option too, especially if your knees are starting to give you some trouble, but you still wanna keep that heart rate up. This is a great option. All right, upper body now. And I'm gonna come back to seated. I'm gonna use the hand weights this time instead of the band because I just like how that feels better. Bicep, burn the hands, hammer curl. With control, really thinking about that bicep muscle, keeping your elbows squeezed right next to your ribs so we're not swinging the whole arm. Really isolating that bicep muscle group. All right, next is shoulder press and fly. Remember, we're keeping the upper body stable, whether we're standing or seated. And to do that, we have to keep our core engaged. So notice what's happening with those muscles in your abdomen. Can you think about pulling the muscles behind your belly button? Can you think about pulling them back towards your spine? All right, back to cardio for our next exercise. Number eight. Let's go. Let's go. All right, next is our kneeling side bend with the leg lift. I'm gonna do this on the chair again. You can do it on the floor again. Let's go. I was just already here. All right, 10 seconds to switch to the other side and get ready to do that again on this side. Let's go. Let's go. All 
right, next is cardio and then our two abdominal exercises. I'm back to my feet for cardio, but I'm gonna keep those punches. Let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna really feel this in my core, because like I said, this is cardio, but it's also building strength in those abdominal muscles, especially those obliques. Last two exercises are our abdominals. I'm gonna to come to the floor for these, but you can do these seated as well. Let's, Let's knock these out. We are almost done. One more exercise to go, and then don't go anywhere because we're going to cool down and stretch. Last round. Last exercise today. Great job, everyone. This is our time to cool down, get a little stretch, check in with how we're feeling after this tough workout. Please don't skip this part. This is super important to being able to restore and be able to continue to work out and continue to do the things that we enjoy doing. So let's go ahead and get started. If you need a break first, go ahead and take a break. Again, you've got that remote, so you're in control. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna stay on the mat for today's stretch. Um, I'll try to talk you through some other variations if you need to. But the first thing I wanna do is stretch the front of this thigh, the quadricep. So I'm actually gonna lay on my side and bend this knee and reach back to the top of my foot or my ankle and try to pull that foot back behind me so that I can stretch the front of this, this hip flexor, these abdominal muscles, even the front of the shoulder and my pectoral muscles. So all the front of the body is getting this great stretch on the right side of the body. If you can't reach back and grab your foot like I am, this is a really good time that if you have like a belt or a strap, you could put it around the top of your foot and then grab the ends and use that to pull yourself into position. And it doesn't have to be a fancy, expensive piece of equipment. It really can be an old belt off a robe or something like that. One more breath. And let's do the same exact thing on the other side. Try to avoid collapsing the front of your body so that you can get a hold of your foot. Because when you do that, you're not actually stretching the front. You feel that? Like if you do this, none of this is getting stretched. In order to stretch that, we have to go the other direction. It's almost like we're making our body into a bow, like a bow and arrow. We're kind of creating this tension. One more breath. And then we can release that. And then let's come on to our back. And let's extend the right leg. Now you can use your hand behind your thigh like I am. You can point, flex that foot, kind of rotate through the ankle. You can bend and straighten the knee. You can even guide this leg again into like circles or rock it side to side. You can either keep this other leg bent or you can have it out on the floor, whichever feels better. But we're sort of just going all the way through on this right side of the lower body and just moving through all those joints, getting a little stretch and rotation. And as you're doing that, if you feel like one area needs just a little bit more time, feel free to spend more time there. 
I always tend to get tight right through my hips. So I like that back and forth there. And while we're here, let's just go ahead and add a little twist. Let's take that right knee that's bent, take our left hand and rest it there, and then keep our shoulder blades on the floor. We're not turning the upper body. We're gonna keep the upper body on the floor, but we're gonna rotate the lower body over to the left. Get a little spinal twist. And then let's come back and do the same thing on the other side. Pull the left leg in. You can bring your hands behind your thigh. If you have a strap, you can even put your foot, you can put the strap on the bottom of your foot and do a lot of these same movements. But you don't have to. I'm gonna do this with just my hands behind my thigh. And as you move from side to side, again, just like our neck, when we stretched it at the beginning, you may notice one side tends to feel a little different from the other. And that might be due to an actual injury that you have, or sometimes, like I said, it's just we tend to, just because we tend to use one side of the body a little differently than the other, it might just be a little bit more strained or a little more or less flexible. So you could even choose to spend a little more time stretching the side that needs it more once you figure out what side that might be for you. If you notice one side is considerably different than the other, um, you could give it a little bit more attention, a little bit more time. And that's another way that you can adapt this for you. And then let's come into that twist on this side. So we're just going the opposite way. And back to the center. Let's go ahead and come up to seated. I'm sitting cross-legged, but you can do any comfortable seated position for you. We're gonna do a little stretch on the shoulder. So I'm taking my right arm across my chest and I can either grab the back of the tricep with my hand or I can hook with my forearm, whichever you think feels better for you. And we're sort of hugging that in so that we can stretch a little bit in the back of the tricep a little bit in the shoulder, just depending on where you're holding on to some tension. And then let's release, take a big breath in, exhale, let's do the other side. All right, let's release again. And I'm gonna turn so you can see what I'm doing. But we're gonna interlace our hands behind our back. You could also grab onto your wrists or forearms. Or once again, if that connection just doesn't feel right to you, you could grab onto a belt on either end, wherever you can reach. You just wanna find enough connection to help us draw the shoulder blades together and lift in the chest and then start to lift those hands up to really deepen that stretch. I'm still rehabbing my right shoulder. So this is about as far as I can go right now. I don't have my full range of motion back yet. And let's release, roll that out. And then take a deep breath and let it go. 
that is all I have for you today. If you feel like there's any other stretching or movement that your body or mind needs before you call it a day, feel free to take time to do that. Maybe take a little rest, a little recovery. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water. It's getting warm out there again. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again in person, either at one of our like fun activities. Tonight we have um, air rifle. Tomorrow night we have kayaking and paddle boarding. And then we have golf again on Friday. So we just got one thing after another for anything that you might be interested in. Um, and like I said, we may also be bringing these um, classes back in person for a while. Um, so I hope that you'll join me if we do that. Um, I'll still keep this library up so that you can do these workouts whenever you want. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Have a good day.